Let's call a meeting to order, please. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Chair Carmelo Aquindo. Present. Vice Chair Member Philip Blantree has an excused absence. Russell Alexander. Present. Member Nanette Douglas. Don Grigsby. Present. Daisy Snyder. Present. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Ms. Snyder is a voting member this evening. Okay, uh, next order of business. If everybody's uh, seen the minutes from the last week's, last month's meeting, can I get a motion for an approval of last month's meetings? Move to approve the minutes. I have I'll a first, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a first and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes 4 0. Okay. Now we'll. we'll Go to first order of business, which is ordinance number 2024-19, uh, annex, annex 23-0007. Good evening for the record, Bernice Gonzalez, principal planner with the community development department. The case before you tonight is the voluntary annexation of the property located at 1795 Pine Grove Road, also known as the Lake Lizzie property. This request meets both the statutory requirements for annexation and is consistent with our joint planning agreement with Osceola County. It is a contiguous and reasonably compact property. The existing count the future land use is low density residential and it has an RS 1C, which is a residential county zoning designation. That's the location of the property, a graphic representation of its proximity to the city boundary. On or before August 27, 2024, staff recommended approval. Likewise, it is requested from the Planning Commission that also recommends approval of Ordinance Number 2024-19 for the annexation of the property known as Lake Lissy. At this time, staff and the applicant are available for questions. Any questions for staff? Uh, does the applicant like to come up and say anything? Is it here? Uh, Patrick Murray with RBI Planning, Landscape Architecture for the record, uh, 111 North Magnolia. We have a few slides, uh, very brief. I don't want to be too uh, repetitive of Bernice's um, presentation on the There we go. Uh, our project team uh, consists of the property owner, uh, Paul Federico with Lake Lizzie Ventures LLC, myself and Alexis Crespo, and Jim Pratt has been our uh, attorney throughout this project. Again, uh, this is an annexation request from Osceola County into the city of St. Cloud. Uh, the property is approximately a half mile north of 192 and located on the eastern boundary of Pine Grove Road. Uh, on the left there, there's a uh, <clears throat> existing city boundary, uh, which extends up for um, Pine Grove Road, and we're seeking to annex into the city and continue the uh, eastward growth uh, and across the street from Pine Grove Road. Um, and that's relatively all we have to say. Again, I don't want to be too repetitive of Bernice, uh, but if you have any questions, certainly happy to answer anything. I have a question. Sure. 
Um, just clarification, um, part of the documents that we saw it said 61 dwellings, and then now and then the second part said 97. So is it 61 single home families or 97 dwellings? So right now we also have a uh, PUD application uh, in review. We initially submitted back in August of 2023 under 97 dwelling units, uh, and that also included a comp plan amendment. Uh, we had a community meeting in February of 2024. Uh, we had discussions with uh, surrounding property owners and members of the community. We withdrew our comp plan application uh, with the hopes of uh, maintaining the low density residential <coughs> future land use and then reduced our density to 64 dwelling units and that's what's currently being reviewed by staff. Mr. Chairman, if, it, if I could just briefly, this is simply an annexation case this evening. I can understand there are some ancillary or anticipated issues and what have you, but tonight this purports as the yeah, voluntary please. annexation request. Thank you. Any other questions? What's the property to just to the north of that between? So the property to the north of us is, a, is about, a, uh, I believe it's about 10 acre property and it is a single family detached uh, home that's directly on Lake Lizzie. And then just north of that is the Lake Lizzie Reserve community. Okay. At one, at, and just a little bit further detail, at one point the uh, property to the north was uh, part of the 16 acres that we are seeking. So it was a, uh, a so the, an assemblage of, of two properties that was split. Is it owned by the same by the same developer? Uh, no, no, not currently. No. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to be uh, opening public comments. I have uh, Jerry Lockhart. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, please understand that this is going to be a little bit of a work in progress because in speaking with the developer, I realize there's been some changes to some of the plans from the original. One second. State your name and your address, please. Jerry Lockhart, 6027 Lake Lizzie Drive, St. Cloud. Go okay. ahead, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for allowing me time to speak. Um, I realize this is only a property annexation at this time, but... I wanted to be sure that I did speak a little bit about the nature of the community and what's out there now. Um, I live on the southwest shore of Lake Lizzie, so probably right before below where the L is in Lake Lizzie right there. And I have a, a lot that's designated E1 estate lot by the county. As do several of my adjacent neighbors, homes that are adjacent to the property being presented are on lots ranging from about a half acre to an acre or more, being that it was essentially rural. Um, my home's approximately a quarter of a mile away. Um, on my own one acre, on my, I have two acres of property. One acre is designated wetlands and for protection of the lakes. And with this property, that was a key concern of ours, uh, was that it was maintained in accordance with DEP and all of that, um, and that the lakes were, were protected. Um, my property, my actual buildable property line is about 200 feet from the lake, so it is just definitely set back. Um, it's also, Lake Lizzie is also home to the Lake Lizzie Preserve and Conservation Area on the east side. Uh, the, and, as, and the lakes in the surrounding area are very rural at this point. Yes, the city is to the west and on the other side of Pine Grove Road, but I believe this would almost be the first city property that crossed Pine Grove Road. And definitely, I believe, one of the first ones on this chain of lakes. Um, the Alligator Chain of Lakes Alliance consists of many homeowners on the six lakes comprising the Alligator Chain, and we have been in contact with the uh, builders, you know, trying to voice our concerns, and they have been receptive to that. Um, I do understand change and growth are inevitable. I am only requesting responsible growth appropriate to the area and in line with projected uh, future growth plans. I also understand the developer purchases property knowing the zoning and asking for um, compromises and has the right to develop it in line with local government, DEP, and South Florida Water Management Guidelines. Your commission is tasked to recommend that this requested property is annexed as part of the city or remains in the county. 
both I and my fellow homeowners in this area on this chain of lakes are concerned that whatever is recommended or approved here sets the stage for growth along these lakes, and which will impact the future environmental health of the lakes and the rural beauty of this area. I would ask that everything be considered when making any final recommendations, especially the density of the property that will be on the lake. <clears throat> and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. If there's anybody else that would like to speak, we'll be closing public comments. Any comments amongst yourselves? I have a question for the city. Mr. Alexander, make sure your mic is closed so we can. I'm fine. So would this property be required to be annexed for the? Uh... Yes, this property fulfills the requirements for annexation according to Florida statutes and the interlocal agreement with Osceola County mm -hmm. for the JPA. Maybe I just thought that's really more of a question for me. It's it's a voluntary okay. annexation. Voluntary annexation. This is a voluntary annexation. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If nobody has any further questions, may I have a motion? Please, please make sure your mics are down so we can get everybody audibly on the mics. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval of ordinance number 2024-19 based on the 16 findings within the land development code. I have a first. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Ms. Snyder, your vote was? Aye. Passes 3-1. Mr. Alexander voting nay. Motion carries. Recommendation for approval, 3-1. to one. Next order of business would be ordinance number 2024-50, future land use, CPA 24-0007. Good evening, Dagmar Instagara, Deputy Director. This item is being requested by staff to be pulled out of the agenda to a um, date certain of October 8th. Thank you very much. We'll be discussing at the end of the meeting. Which will, yeah, we'll be discussing that at the end of the meeting. Okay. <laughs> so since that one's going to be moved to October 8th, next order of business would be ordinance number 2024-66, Mural Ordinance CDA 24-00009. Good evening, Council. This is Tisha Manning, Zoning Manager for the City of St. Cloud. The project before you is um, for the Mural Art Program, um, for Mural Art, um, an amendment to the Land Development Code. Um, and this is for Ordinance 2024-66. Um, the purpose of the mural art um, is to enhance the quality of life for the city residents um, and businesses by allowing them to apply um, for murals um, in semi-public and public spaces. Um, and this article, this amendment to the Land Development Code, um, is being established for strictly for non-residential development um, that are going to be in the following zoning districts, which is CBD1, CBD2, um, the community redevelopment area and along any arterial roadways. So arterial roadways are 13th Street, Narcusi, um, I believe Nolte, I'm not exactly sure, but um, major roadways is what we're looking at for the mural art program. So you wouldn't see anything on, you know, the side streets or um, those areas unless it falls within the community redevelopment um, area or CBD1 or CBD2 zoning. Um, we, of course, are going to um, give a definition of what the mural art is and what it does, and it's allowing for paintings, um, images, graphics, mosaics, frescoes, um, and it has to be directly applied to the exterior walls that are visible to standard passerbyers. Um, so nothing on the interior, nothing in breezeways and corridors, it has to be visibly to the public. Um, and any color scheme that they use um, will need to be comp complementary to the surrounding area as well as to the building itself. And it cannot take away from any of the architectural features. Um, 
it shall not cover doors and windows so it shall not make any doors or windows become opaque um, and again it's designed to enhance the character of the buildings and it does not damage the building so a lot of times when they um, apply mural arts sometimes they bring in you know concrete and other type of um, materials for murals and they're allowed to do that as long as it's not causing any damage to the building itself so the way that it's affixed we'll have to make sure the building remains its integrity. Um, so permitted materials is going to be paint, tile, mosaic, um, di digital images, and low relief sculpture. So um, low relief sculpture, think about um, it as whenever you do um, kind of like a carving that does not go into the actual building itself. So it's just going to be a slightly raised. So if you run your hand across it, it has a little bit of, you know, texture or, you know, definition to it, but it's nothing that's damaging the building. Um, size limit. So two-story buildings, they're able to cover 100% of the wall. Any buildings above two-story, we're looking that it's about 50% wall coverage, and that's because we're wanting them to leave some type of blank space so that the mural is just not, you know, so bold and big and in your face that it looks like it's towering over everything else. So to make some type of design where there has some blank space available. Um, and we are allowing a smaller amount of text or requesting um, 10% in any type of mural art. And inside the ordinance itself, um, it does speak about what that text cannot include. And one of the things is going to be um, any type of, you know, um, um, profanity, um, political propaganda, um, uh, slang, as far as anything that may be derogatory toward any type of race um, or any type of um, uh, person. So we have some real specific <coughs> guidelines of what the text can be. Um, staff has reviewed this, um, wrote this ordinance, and we are recommending approval. And likewise, we ask that the Planning Commission also recommend approval of Ordinance 2024-66. This is um, a city project, so I'm available if you have any questions. So you're taking a page out of the Kissimmee downtown area, basically some of their murals and their statues and stuff that they have around all of downtown and Main Street? Correct. So we do have a mural program right now in our downtown area, mm -hmm. which consists of CBD1 and CBD2. So this mural art program is just kind of extending, extending it out um, so that some of the businesses along 192, some of the businesses on the Narcoustic Corridor, they can also, um, you know, have these type of arts on their buildings. Yeah. So will, will they be required to have murals or it's voluntary? No, it's voluntary. What, what, do you, what is a digital image? So a, demo, a digital image, um, what they do is they actually cast it on the wall. Um, and ag again, they'll bring in like different types of materials um, to attach it to the wall. Um, or they cast it on the wall and sometimes they just sketch it out that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just didn't. I was thinking neon sign or something. Oh, no. <laughs> believe me, I did a lot of research <laughs> to figure out what these things were. <laughs> Is this going to be including like the power boxes and stuff like and uh, st stuff like that just laying around already that they were supposed to be wrapping like in different things? Is that also going to be included in this, or is that totally separate? So this this our, um, this ordinance does not cover that right now. We mm -hmm. are looking into. So if it is a mural, well, let me back up. So if it is a mural that they are putting on those power boxes, then yes, we can be considerate. But sometimes the power boxes have to be um, changed out or they have to use a different type of material. So we are looking into um, maybe doing some type of wrapping or something on those power boxes. Um, that does take coordination with FDOT and different service providers. Okay. Any other questions? Can you walk me through this, like the selection process? If somebody wanted, was interested in taking up a wall and painting it, what's the process to be approved? Yes. So right now, um, if a business owner comes in and they want a mural, um, they would have to submit, of course, all the applications. And they actually have to provide a sketch of what the mural is going to be. Um, and that is so that definitely, if this should this ordinance get approved, we can, you know, look at it in detail and make sure it meets the requirements of this ordinance. Um, if something comes up that we feel may be controversial or something that, you know, takes 
um, an approval above staff level that has been written into the ordinance that it would go before city council for approval. So if you come in with, you know, a standard ordinance, and again, let's think about it. Art is subjective. Mm -hmm. So if someone mm -hmm. comes in with a mural, yeah. they want it to have two ducks on the side of their wall. Okay, it's two ducks on the side of your wall. Um, and it meets everything else of the ordinance, and we'll just send them through the process. They actually have to get a permit for it, pay for that, and then go ahead and install the mural. So right now in these areas, if somebody wanted to put something on their wall because they own the building, they could do it without approval. But with this, that means in those areas, they can't put anything on the outside of their wall without approval. Currently, right now, they cannot. Oh, they cannot. No. So on any building in any of these areas, it's written that they have no permission to other than paint the color outside they can't put a mural or a picture or anything on correct because again we have architectural standards and murals is not part of the architectural oh, features yeah. um, now in cbd1 and cbd2 though we do have murals because that was a different program that was approved by an ordinance with the main street mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah at uh, what time at uh, one time you said uh, they were going to have to have a notarized artist to do these now it doesn't have to be that way Correct. So we were, um, you're talking about the public arts ordinance, mm -hmm. and that one was a little bit more um, detailed because we were looking at that for residential mm -hmm. subdivisions when it came to, like, placemaking and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we were requiring more um, parameters as far as who actually installed it, what type of art it was. Um, this, because we wanted to make it available for, you know, you know, small business owners to, you know, do some type of representation on their building. Hopefully it'll generate people coming in. They want to, you know, take a picture with the mural on the side of their building. Um, it's going to bring some character to the area, to the 192 area, things like that. So it does not have all of those um, restrictions. Basically like the hardware store and stuff, their mural mm -hmm. like that. Any other questions? No questions. I will open it up to the public. Ms. Manning, thank you. Any public comments? We will be closing public comments. Any other comments amongst yourselves? Okay, may I have a motion? Yeah, if I could figure out which one to read. Land development. Recommendation. Land development? Yeah, it's recommendation. Uh, in the back, basically. It's not based. It's in the back. It's, so it's, you're saying use land development. I can, yeah. do, I can do that. Yeah, they're seeking a recommendation. For the I would like to make a motion to recommend approval of <laughs> ordinance number 2024-66 uh, based on the 16 findings within the land development. It's based on, based staff's, on presentation. staff's presentation. Okay. I have a first. Do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Passes 4-1. 4-0. 4-0. Sorry. 4-0. Yes, sir. Unanimous. 4-0. Recommend of approval. Okay. Uh, Ms. Clark? Madam Secretary. 4-0. Yep. Our next meeting will be October 8th at 6 p.m. Con contrary to the uh, agenda, agenda, which says the 15th, but staff is requesting We've that all been we notified. meet for October on the 8th, that's the second Tuesday yeah. of next month, same bad time, 6 p.m. I said I'd be here. Any other comments? So I'll get a motion to close. Move to adjourn. To adjourn. Have second. Second. I have a first and second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. All right.